So, I'm doing this completely wrong. But I ladies and gentlemen, first step that we're going to want to do is swap the x and y variables, right? It's already set in the y. So, oh, I forgot to talk about that. Um, all right, so we'll remind me. I have something I forgot to talk about. Swap the x and y variables. Okay, does everybody follow with me with step number one? Yeah. Or at least in this case, it's step number one. It was step number two if we had fx. Now we need to solve for y. Again, as I mentioned, you cannot, multiply, you cannot solve for y while it's in the denominator. So like we did in algebra one, we have to multiply by everything in the denominator to get it off the denominator. You do that on both sides. Notice how I'm putting this in parentheses. I'm multiplying x by 2y minus 5. If you don't put parentheses, it's just x times 5. No, it's x times negative 5 and x times 2y, right? So you got to make sure you apply distributive property. So those divide out to give me 1. Here I'm left with 2yx minus 5x equals y plus 1. Now here comes up another issue. In Algebra 1, we also learned how to solve problems that looked like this. Okay. When we had problems like this, I gave, we gave you guys problems with variables on both sides. And we said solve. And what we remembered was when we're solving equations, you cannot solve an equation with a variable on both sides. When you're trying to solve an equation, you have to get the variables on the same side, right? So we picked a side, usually the left side to solve, and we got our variables on the same side. And then we isolated the variable, and we were able to solve, right? Well, ladies and gentlemen, um, we have y's on both sides. We're trying to solve for y. So we have y's on both sides. We've got to get the y's on the same side. So what we need to do, though, is, like A over here, add and subtract so they get to the same side. So I subtract a y, subtract a y. I'll get the 5x to the other side, because I don't want those on the same side. I want to get y by itself. So now I have 2yx minus y equals 5x plus 1. Now the problem was, what was nice about this problem is we got to our x because 3x and 2x are like terms, right? x plus x is 2x, 3x minus 2x is x. Those are easy to subtract. 2yx minus y are not like terms. This has a y and an x, this just has a y. They're not like terms. You can't combine them. So we have two y's. We have two y's over here, but we need to only solve for one of them. So we need to get only to be 1. Yes? Why don't we just divide the y instead of subtracting? Because if you divide the y, you have to divide both of those by y. Yeah, I think if we do it the first time, it doesn't work. Like, it's, it's a straight ball in this. If we well, then it would that way. Yeah. No, if you, if you divide everything by y, you have to divide every single term by y. So, you have one of the so they're, not gonna, they're not going to divide out. Yes? Reverse distributive property, which we would call like factoring. So you'd factor out the y, which would leave you with a 2x minus 1 equals 5x plus 1. Now, by factoring out the y, I have reduced it to 1y. Now, all I need to do is isolate the y. So you see my y is being multiplied by this expression. So to undo multiplying an expression, you have to divide by the expression. So therefore, y inverse is equal to 5x plus 1 divided by 2x minus 1. Now, one thing I forgot to mention with you guys is we forgot to go over the domain and range. So let's do domain and range real quick. Domain and range over here. So there's no radicals, right? So we don't need to worry about the radicals. Mm -hmm. And we'll, show it. we'll go over on the graph here in a second. But let's go and look at the domain and range here real quick. Ladies and gentlemen, the domain, there's no radicals, so we're only looking at the denominator, right? Is it possible for us to divide by a uh, 0? Yes, yeah, so we need to find what value is going to make our denominator 0. So we set our denominator equal to 0, and we solve x equals 5 halves. So that means when x equals 5 halves, my denominator is 0, right? Which is no-go for domains, right? Can, that's not in the domain. Is any other number bad? Or any other number not in the domain? No. So we'd write domain, actually I'm going to write it down here, all real numbers, so from negative infinity to 5 halves, and 
expand from 5 halves to infinity. Union. Now to find the range, we need to look at the inverse. Here's our inverse function. Let's find the domain of our inverse function. Again, no radicals, just a denominator with a variable. We need to figure out what variable, what number makes the denominator equal to 0. Set it equal to 0 and solve. x equals 1 half. So it's all real numbers except for the number 1 half. Well, remember, the range of the inverse is a domain, oh, I'm sorry, the domain of the inverse is the range of f of x. So my range is all real numbers except for 1 half. And there's your domain and range. Yes? Um, 